Here's a glass beaker on a table beneath a stone that is suspended by a string attached to a weighing scale. The weight of the stone is 5 newtons. We dunk the stone into the beaker of water. Notice two things. First, the submerged stone weighs less. It now weighs 3 newtons. Second, the water level is raised because water has been displaced by the stone. A little thought will convince you that the volume of water displaced is equal to the volume of the stone. A little stone has a small volume and will displace a small volume of water. A big stone has more volume and will displace a larger volume of water. Any submerged object displaces a volume of water or fluid equal to its own volume. Let's dunk the stone into a container when it's brim full. The displaced water spills into a smaller, empty container. Note that the weight of the water displaced is 2 newtons. This is no coincidence. Remember the stone in air weighs 5 newtons and 3 newtons when suspended in water. The difference, 5 newtons minus 3 newtons, equals 2 newtons, the weight of water displaced by the submerged stone, and as we see, the buoyant force on the stone. The buoyant force, Bf, on the stone is 2 newtons. This relationship of buoyant force and volume of fluid displaced was discovered in ancient Greece by the philosopher and scientist Archimedes. It's called Archimedes' Principle, which states, Any body completely or partially submerged in a fluid is buoyed up by a force equal to the weight of the fluid displaced by the body. The principle holds for any fluid, whether liquid or gas. We'll only cover water in this lesson. A block of wood in water floats and is only partially submerged. I show the partially submerged part with this red crosshatch. If the block were pushed beneath the surface, completely submerged, all of it would be red crosshatched. You'd have to hold the wooden block down to keep it from bobbing to the surface. In both cases, an upward buoyant force acts on the block of wood. For the freely floating block, Upward buoyant force, Bf, is equal to the downward weight of the block, Mg. Buoyant force, Bf, on the submerged block is greater. Why? Because the water it displaces equals its entire volume. So it's held in place by hand with a force, F. I show the Bf on each. Pretend that our floating block of wood is a 100-ton ship. What's the buoyant force on the ship? I hope you said 100 tons. If perchance you missed this, what's the buoyant force on a floating 200-ton ship? Correct, 200 tons, which leads us to a corollary to Archimedes' principle for floating objects. That's that the buoyant force on a floating object is equal to both the weight of the liquid displaced and the weight of the floating object. Buoyant force matches a floating object's weight, otherwise the object wouldn't float. Here's a beaker of brimful water that weighs 8 newtons. We place a piece of wood in the beaker. Water overflows, but you know what? The beaker still weighs 8 newtons. If we put in a bigger piece of wood, more water overflows and we see that the same brim-filled beaker still would weigh 8 newtons. Whatever the weight of the floating block, an equal weight of water overflows. For example, if a block weighs 2 newtons and the overflow is 2 newtons, the weight of the beaker is the same 8 newtons. If the block weighs 4 newtons, the overflow is twice as much 4 newtons, and the beaker's weight still is 8 newtons. This is in accord with Archimedes' principle for floating things. Things that float displace an amount of water equal to their own weight. This is wonderfully employed by the Falkirk Wheel in Scotland, which takes the place of a series of locks to raise or lower boats more than 30 meters vertically. Here we see a boat entering a gondola at the bottom of the giant wheel. At the same time, another boat enters a gondola above after traveling to the site along a raised canal. Both boats displace their own weights of water. A heavy boat causes more overflow of water than a lighter boat, leaving the gondola effectively brim full. 
What this means is that the weight of a gondola will always be the same regardless of what's floating in it. Here's a set of balanced gondolas, each initially filled with 300 tons of water. The left one carries a 50-ton boat. After displacing 50 tons of water, the water remaining weighs 250 tons. Total, 300 tons. The right gondola carries a 25-ton boat. After displacing 25 tons of water, 275 tons of water remain. Total, 300 tons. So each gondola weighs 300 tons, whatever the weight of the boats they carry, in accord with Archimedes' principle. So this balancing of gondolas for boats that are raised or lowered means very little energy needed to turn the giant wheel. A very efficient system. This is the most yum application of Archimedes' principle that I know of. A great pleasure to share with you on this cast. Let me leave you with a question. If one of the gondolas carried no boat, only water, would the two gondolas be balanced? Defend your answer. Until next time, yum to Archimedes.